going back to something. You hung out with C three PO. How 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 was all the how was the premiere? How was yeah, all talk, working talk on the movie? The premiere, what the hell? The premiere was was outside of the birth of my daughter is probably the most amazing night of my life and maybe even better because the birth of my daughter was like really traumatic as well it was like 52 hours in labor yeah. for my wife yeah. and I was like oh my god doing a lot my of head crying in. happening there the, whereas the premiere was just like nothing but just like good times just like having so much fun and it was huge I mean they blocked off like four s- square blocks and they parked a giant life size X-wing in the middle of yeah, Hollywood Boulevard that. it was That's awesome I've done again been to premieres before I've never seen anything like this it was just an order of magnet like Star Wars is nothing else in the world even close to it and it was just epic and meeting uh, I, so i i don't even know where to start i've got so many funny stories um my i, I just went to annie daniels i was so cool to meet him and my wife was there as well and we were talking to like two minutes and she know i said do you know who this is this is c3po and she went oh my god uh, cause she like she loves the droids and she loves three PO and those are her characters that she like you know, that's her thing like she loves those characters. Um, for me, the mo- and I got to meet a lot of cool people. The most like, I got the most I got completely tongue tied and like again kind of emotional was meeting Lawrence Kasdan, oh, yeah. who wrote Empire and Jedi and Force Awakens and Raiders of the Lost Dark and basically almost every film that made me want to do this for a living. I was like I, I spotted him and I was like. And I just said it really loudly. Oh my God, that's Lawrence Kasdan. And he looked around and I just wandered over to him. And the nice thing about being a premiere for something you worked on, I went up to so many famous people that normally I would not dare go up to. Sure. And I, and, and I said, and it was nice. I said, look, usually I wouldn't have the balls to do this, but I co-wrote this movie. So I feel like I have a free pass to say hello to you. And they all went, <laughs> and they all went oh, and they gave me, they were all just so happy and nice to, uh, to talk to and, and Lawrence and I went over and talked to him and I said you're, you know you're, the movies that you wrote the work that you did is like why I do what I do and I got choked up I couldn't help myself um, yeah that was my favorite it was Lawrence Kasdan that's awesome yeah. that's amazing that's awesome yeah so then afterwards you p- posted about Kevin Smith Kevin Smith came up to you or no you I went up to Kevin and he, Kevin was one of my I you know and so he was standing there and on the red carpet and I love Kevin Smith I think he's great um, and I also know that he's a gen- he's one of a genuine fan, right? He's not mm-hmm. one of these posers like, oh, I'm a geek. Yeah, whatever. You know, what Biggs is second name? Do you know? No. Uh, but Kevin, I bet you could tell could tell you um, because these guys like live and breathe this stuff. And um, and I and I did the thing. I went up and I said, yeah, it's funny because it, it takes me a minute to say it, and you see it change. I said, I went, I said hi, Kevin. I usually wouldn't do this. And I, he's had that interaction a million times, mm-hmm. right? And you can see him kind of being, because he's lovely and he's very polite, but you can see the like, here we go again. And I said, but I was one of the writers of the film, so I feel like it's okay for me to talk to you. And he just instantly went, and just came in and gave me a big hug and he was so happy and I had a nice chat with him and it was like, are you excited for the film? And he's like, are you fucking kidding, dude? Yeah, I'm so excited. And then I saw him again at the party after. I said, you have to tell me, before the film, you have to tell me what you think of the film afterwards. He goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I... Um, and I spotted him and I went over and I just, I tapped him on the shoulder and I turned around and just went like, well, and he just kind of came in and gave me this like huge, like beefy bear hug thing. Yeah. And it was awesome. And I had a similar experience with Will Wheaton who loved it as well. Uh, and Chris Hardwick and all the kind of like the geekerati were at the sure, sure, premiere. Sure, sure, yeah. And again, I usually would not be permitted or feel. You wouldn't want to come up to feel, these people at a random party like, I don't, You don't want to be one of those guys. But again, like it was the one night in my life where I got, I could walk up to anyone and say, you know what, I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, you're at I, my party. Had, yeah, this is like, yeah, yeah, you're in my house. <laughs> um, <laughs> that I got that I got to that I got to do that, and I got to do that with a lot of, a lot of people that you know the, the cast people I I'd met you know I met had met Felicity and Diego and Alan and various people who worked on the movie when I was on the set briefly. Uh, but there are others that I had I had never met Mads, so I just like walked up uh, to Mads oh. and just said hi. Mads. How cool is he in real life? Because he seems like one of the coolest people. One like, of the nicest, most gracious people cool. I've ever met. At, really? the, at the after party, it was fairly late and everyone had had a few drinks. And, I, and I'd, met, I'd already, he knew who I was because I'd, I'd introduced myself on the red carpet. And I wandered over to him. It was starting to get late and people were starting to filter out. And I, it was kind of cool because the whole thing was like decked out, like all this kind of rebel stuff. And they had a massive like illuminated Death Star blueprint on the back, on the back of the wall. And he, I don't know if he did this deliberately, but he was sitting under it. And he was just like, <laughs> see that? I built that. Um, and, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. 
And I went over to him and, I, and everyone was just like on such a high because the film was so good and everyone was just like so happy and so relieved and still on that kind of that, you come out of a movie like that, it's like on a carpet of air, right? You're just so energized. Oh man, that was so good. And everyone's so happy and like, you know, it's the end of, you know, I, I worked on it for about a year. Uh, Gareth, you know, for, you know, three times that long and everyone is just so exhausted and so like, ugh, by the end of the film that we get, finally actually get it out there and it's good. It's like such an epic sense of relief and you're just so happy and elated. That it was like just the vibes in the room. Everyone was just like, oh, and like you can tell like the Disney stuff, like Bob Iger and Alan Horn like, yeah. yeah. Like everyone feels like the movie's gonna gonna be good. And so I went over to Mads and I was like, I was like, can you like, isn't this amazing? Like we did this thing and like, you're the guy that built the Death Star. Like how cool is that? And he just sat there for a second and he kind of went like this, like come in for a second. Mads called you over, close. that's awesome. Just like, just leaning close and he was like, we made a Star Wars. And I was like, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I mean, like, so to go back to normal life, you're driving over here, you're driving through San Francisco. Does that just, is that in your head all the time of like, I fucking made a Star Wars. I mean, now it is because it's, everything's happening right now. Right. And it's, mm -hmm. but you have to remember, I, I haven't worked on the movie since January of 2015. That's when I was done on the film. Yeah. So I've written three films since then and like a bunch of TV pilots and I had a book that came out and like the movie kept going on without me, but I had moved on to other things and it, it almost kind of forgotten about it. So, oh mm -hmm. yeah, Star Wars, that's coming out. <laughs> uh, and so now to, to have it all kind of come back, it's like a bunch of memories and, you know, emotions and it's oh, yeah. all, you know, it, it was all worth it. Was it... Is that, I, I mean, I, I suppose it's just what, how it is to be a screenwriter. Was it hard for you to be like, all right, my job's done, and now you guys are going to go start making memories as you make the film? And you're I mean, in a way, it's part of, you know, you understand that as a screenwriter, there is a, you're a bit like a, a, a and this is not just Star Wars, but any film, really, um, unless you're also directing or producing, you're kind of like a party planner. And you sit in a, you know, when I, I posted a picture a while ago, of like the room that Gareth and I started in when we first started working on developing John's story. Um, and it's this very unglamorous room. Like it just looked like something from like Dunder Mifflin. This is a very boring room. <laughs> and you don't really think like this is, doesn't feel like Hollywood or you know, a galaxy far, far away at all. But then, you know, you get to, you know, where you are now, where you're standing next to an X-Wing and you go, oh shit, like this is all real but my you know my part of the movie unless you're also the, the writer that's writing all the way through production you know there's a point where on every film i kind of you know help plan the party so you're going to do all this fun stuff and you're going to go to these planets and you're going to do this and that and you're going to blow this up and this is going to happen and then you give it to the guys that actually go make it and they go right bye you're you're done we're going to go do go actually have the party now right and, um, you know, that's, he's, oh, I want to go, I want to go to the party. <laughs> Can I come? Um, like, no, we don't need you anymore. So like they, yeah. again, they didn't, they didn't need me on set, but like, they couldn't keep me away. Like, I, I, went. I, mean, I feel like the one thing that would have made the movie better was if you were just on the planets, just, you know, with them. Just I was, just running in the I was, um, those Navy SEALs I, I, was, I was, I was, I was there for a week as a, as a, as a, as a personal guest of, of Gareth, because we became very good friends on the, during the movie. And I was just there. So there's no way I'm not. Visiting oh, yeah. that set? Are you kidding that's me? That's great. That's great. And Chris did this. Chris was the same thing. He was like, "I'm going," and so we just went. We just showed up. <laughs> Your suitcases <laughs> in hand. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, obviously, you would never do this. But how hard? How how hard is it to see that and be like, "I this is I'm just I have to watch." There's no you can't say anything. You can't be like, "Eh, that's not no." You know, you, you, I, you don't really think it, and you're just so happy to be there. Yeah, and you're I mean, so traditionally for people who don't know, like the writer, you, you would probably not get that invite if you weren't. You know. If you're not the act, if you're not the writer that's like actively working on right. the movie, then there's no then, reason yeah, for you to be there. There's no reason for you right. to be there, other than you know if they're gracious enough to invite you, which they were. Um, I uh, you know I, you're just there as a as a as an observer, mm. and you know at that point you already know the movie's in good hands. These people know what they're doing. You know, I'm just happy now. It's a relief in a way to just be able to sit and watch and watch it happen. So the first time you were on set was that on the beach during the beach weekend? No, it was Yavin Four. Yavin it was Four, the rebel okay. base. It was so the first set I was on. What's like the, to walk us through that? What's the first thing you see there? The, the I, wore, I, I I walked onto the the set and it's that that big round table with the green screens oh around my God. it. So the yeah, that's awesome. It's like I walked room. onto that set which they recreated perfectly from 1977, and it was I again I was like I I almost cried. It was like it was like that really is, being there. You told a story uh, the last time you were on, I think, or maybe it was the first time you were on. You've been on so many times, it's hard to track that now. Of when you were doing the Book of Eli, and Denzel Washington came up to you and said, 
could, did you like you did all this? Like, can you can you believe that you this is all from you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, and, yeah, it was that, and that and that was even more surreal because that was my first time being on a set of something I had written. And Denzel was, yeah, he came over and he's like, your words are coming alive, Gary. How does it feel? And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to get back to you. I don't know. It's too, it's like, it doesn't sink in. Right. It still hasn't sunk in. Not on Star Wars. It still hasn't sunk in. That's crazy. That's crazy. So what, I know it still hasn't sunk in, but like I, what I, I mean, I love about you in, in general, but about in the Star Wars, you know, uh, crossing of paths here is what a big fan you are. And I loved the fact that you continued to be a big fan of the project you made and then passed off and all those things to where following you on Twitter, the genuine joy you had anytime the Rogue One stuff started to appear. Yeah. The, there's photos of you buying armful of toys for characters that, even if they weren't your idea necessarily, even though I imagine the most were so to some extent, they, you're, they're part of this thing you made happen. I, uh, I went to, um, you know, they, they had this thing last year for Force Awakens called Force Friday, uh, which was summertime in September, was where they like released all the toys and they made a big deal you can go get. Um, uh, you know, the toys and the ships from the movie for the first time. And it's like a scrum of people at Target and Walmart getting these toys. And they did a, they didn't make as big a deal out of it for, for Rogue, but they did a, 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 you know, a similar day where the toys, there was a, a day that the toys had dropped. And it's like, I'm going to Target. I'm going to get, I'm going to get some, I'm going to get some shit. Uh, and there, there's a mall here that has a Target and uh, a Disney store. And they have some of the best stuff like Disney store exclusives. And uh, a hot topic, which usually I would not go in a hot topic, mm. but they had so, like, they could, like, but there was certain like Funko bubble the Funko guys Pops, yeah, you yeah. could only get at hot topic. So I had to go in the hot topic, and so I did. I went to three different stores, and uh, almost got into a fight over a, a, with a guy in the aisle for like the last K two S O, and I was this close to pulling the "Do you know who I am?" <laughs> shit. But I was like, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> right, I, I, right, I, right. I guess I'd never get over feeling like a dick doing that. Uh, but he, he was, in the end, he gave it. Actually, you know what? I, I remember now. We found out there, was, there were two. So it was like, okay, there's so a second one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I went and bought, oh, I just bought every toy. I couldn't help myself. Did you leave you, a mint on card or did you open them up? Did I what? Leave a mint on card or did you take them out of the package? Um, no, I, took, I, I don't do that. And yet, toys are meant to be played with. Sure. I don't understand people that buy toys and keep them in boxes. It's like keeping a, a bird in a, in a cage or something. Like, these things are meant to spread their wings and fly. You're supposed mm -hmm. to play with toys. Exactly. You got to freeze so them. All the, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna freeze them in carbonite. <laughs> I still have I still have some that are still in boxes because I bought like multiples of certain things sure. to give to people as gifts or yeah. I guess you know if you you know I wouldn't do this for like something super expensive, but like the little ones like I bought a gin that I kept in the box and one that I took out to you know do that you know play with <laughs> gin and krennic like. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you, didn't you used to do that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kidding me, please. Also, like, each other? My my toys were all inclusive too, so I have like Green Lantern in there as well. It doesn't it didn't matter? It didn't matter if it was well, that like, would Dark make sense. I mean, versus Superman, whatever. Green Lantern, you know, he could get over there. Absolutely. I don't. For some reason, I had a Green Lantern that was my favorite toy. I had no idea. Where that was I got the great thing about toys is that it actually almost kind of happening in movies is like you know Green Lantern and you know Doctor Strange crossovers. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. I saw an interesting thing on Twitter. Someone was talking about they they tweeted out that I guess when the original Star Wars came out, they didn't have enough toys to sell, so they sold cards that was like a certificate a voucher for that you, you bought the toy and then you can come back in when they had it in yes stock. chris whites has one of those really? the original star wars toys from 1977 they were so what happened was if you remember the history nobody knew that star wars was going to blow up yeah. it opened on like a handful of screens they didn't know it's gonna be a big deal the idea of like a big event movie release star wars created that it didn't exist before mm -hmm. and so you know they the movie came out they put it on i don't know how many screens pablo or someone could tell you and it became, and suddenly, like the people at Fox are going, are you, are you watching this? Are you seeing what's happening? Like people can't get in the door. Like this is, we maybe we should put, put it on more screens. The next thing you know, it's a huge thing. And by the time Empire comes around, it is a huge thing. Um, but yeah, so with the, they didn't really. I believe they did have some toys, but like again, the idea of merchandising and toys and action figures based on the movie, Star Wars created all of that. Mm -hmm. None of that existed, and so there was so much demand for these toys that they just started issuing these cards. Like we can't give you a toy. But here's like an exclusive piece of paper that says you're going to get a toy. Yeah. And even those now are considered like collectible yeah, items to have. Chris White yeah. has one. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the, the article I just briefly glossed over it on Twitter, but it said something like there was some, some of these are selling for like thousands of dollars. There's a documentary about it on Netflix. Is there? Yeah. It goes That's through cool. it all. Yeah. How they had the cardboard cut out and it said like this guy's coming in this thing. And it was like you could put the ones you had on it and then you they had the spaces for what mm. would be coming down the line so you knew it was that was good. I mean that was always a fun thing to do with other people that watched on the movie like whether it was me and Gareth or Chris or other people you know or, uh, um, 
you know, like what, what what's your story that kind of makes you like the coolest fan? And Chris had that card. Yeah. Um, and like Hal Hickel, who's the animation director of ILM. So like, if you liked K2SO, like Hal's a big part of why you liked him because he animated and like, all the eye movements, that's mm -hmm. all him and his team at ILM. Um, he has a, a framed piece of paper, a letter from uh, Lucasfilm on his wall from 1977 that says, dear Hal, when he wrote this when he was like you know, seven or eight years old, yeah. Thank you very much for your suggestions for a sequel to Star Wars. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, we develop all of those ideas ourselves and, you know, we don't really, but, you know, keep plugging away. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you're obviously very smart. And one of these days you'll, you know, you'll, you'll get there. And then years later, he has it framed on the book because years later, George Lucas wrote on it going, yeah, you made it when he was actually working at Lucasfilm. And That's so, awesome. you know, these, all of these people now, so many of the people that work at Lucasfilm are of the generation that grew up desperately loving this stuff and now they actually get to get put their hands in the clay That's and so awesome. play with it yeah did you have you met lucas no gareth did i didn't i never met him oh, this gareth guy taking all your opportunities <laughs> well you all I, the props i gotta learn to direct that's yeah. the key you gotta well, learn how to use a so that is a question of mine right is, it, is that an ambition of yours eventually to to kind of get more behind the camera i mean maybe i mean no i don't know not necessarily as you know as, as a specific thing that i want to do and it's something I would have to learn. I have no idea how to frame a shot or, you know. You just get a good DP for that. Get a good, get a, get a, good DP. Uh, but as a way to stay on the train longer mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of have more creative equity in, you know, in, in what you create, there's a number of ways to do that. But directing is certainly one of them, yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah. You helped write a Star Wars movie. So, yeah. What the so, but, but that's the thing, too. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can talk about kind of what's next for you, but are you, are, I mean, obviously you're probably always working on ideas here and there. Do you know kind of what the next step is? Or are you just like, you know what? I'm taking a, well, you've, also, you've, you've, you've been off this project for years, so you've, you're clearly working on some other stuff. Yeah, so I'm doing a movie right now for Fox called Mouse Guard, which is uh, based on um, a very popular series of comic books, kind of like little fairy Jedi knights that mice with swords, and they protect the other creatures of the forest. Oh, that's awesome. Um, very, very, very popular very comic. You ever read it? Eisner, 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 you should no. do it, yeah. Eisner cool. Awards uh, series, win, winning series of comic books by David Peterson. They're fantastic books. And uh, Matt Reeves, who makes the Planet of the Eight movies, is producing it, and we're going to try and make that. Uh, this year. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 And that's I continue, great. and I'm working on, uh, I did, uh, when I was done on Rogue, Lucasfilm very kindly asked me to stick around and work on Star Wars Rebels. So I did three episodes of Star Wars Rebels for this current season, two of which already came out. I got to write the Wedge Antilles origin story, which is really cool. That's bust, cool. <laughs> that was also a disgruntled TIE fighter pilot that they, that they bust out of an Imperial Flight Academy. Uh, so I got to write that episode. One, another one that was on a couple of weeks ago, and there's one more, I believe, this season, and then I did one for season four. Uh, so I got to do some some stuff in the, in the kind of animated TV Star Wars universe as well. That's awesome. What, and what's that process like? I, I imagine it's, it's a lot more truncated than, than like, did you get a lot less time to work on that than the actual story for the, for the movie? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you can't spend three or four years making a season <laughs> of TV. You got to do one every year, and there's, uh, you know, 22 episodes. And yeah, that's a, that's a fun process. Uh, Dave Filoni, who um, uh, uh, created the Clone Wars TV series with George, the animated TV series, um, is still at Lucasfilm and, and runs Star Wars Rebels and is also, again, one of the kind of the major kind of brain trust people mm -hmm. uh, at Lucasfilm and was one of, one, one of the last guys to kind of really kind of learn. He was like kind of George's Padawan before George left. So like he like, underst like understands you know, what the, what the kind of the George part of Star Wars is and what mm -hmm. he would like and what he wouldn't like. Um, and, you know, make sure that that is still infused into everything that Lucasfilm creates. And you go to Skywalker Ranch and you sit in a big room with like 10 other writers and you come up with story ideas. It's, it's a fun way to to spend a day. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> is it much different than writing the movie? Because the movie, I imagine you work, I mean, you're talking to people, but primarily you're just kind of by yourself, right? When you're developing Yeah, it's ideas. much more, it's, well, I mean, not, again, on Rogue, I, I, I can't really go too much into the process, but, you know, I work very closely with Gareth mm -hmm. and there were other people in the room that, you know, are kind of suggesting ideas. But for the most part on a film, yeah, it's generally just you on your own and you might be working with a director or other just people. With your, that, I, I imagine you would but just there's a lot of sit, There's a lot, I mean, my job 90% of the time is sitting part of the reason why I'm active on Twitter and Facebook is like, that's how I interact. And like, that's how I talk to people. I don't go out. I sit at home on my own most days well, you're married in now. my, in my gym jams. <laughs> I'm the same and way. it's a solitary, um, it's a solitary, uh, existence profession. 
Uh, and I like that. I'm kind of a hermit most of the time, but every now and again, you know, it's fun to come do something like this. But TV is very, very different. TV, you sit in a room, you, you, you know, what they call breaking story, which is basically just means figuring out what the story is mm -hmm. and what are the beats, what happens and why do we care and how does that lead into the next episode? And um, it's much more, most television is like this. It's much more collaborative. You sit in a room, in a writer's room with like a dozen people and you all collaborative, collaboratively break the story. And someone says, well, what if this happens? And someone says, oh, but yeah, what if you did that? And I did this twist, and it's a kind of a two brains are better, eight brains and ten brains are better than one, and you all break the stories together, and then the episodes kind of get divvied out. Like, who wants to, like, I, I really wanted to write the Wedge episode, so they let me write the Wedge episode. But that story was created as a, like, a, like I said, as almost all TV shows are, as like a group of people in a room figuring it out as a team. But then had you been a big fan of Rebels before? How, how big of a learning curve is that for you to go in a room with people that have been writing on the show consistently since mm. it came out? I mean, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit in, in, the, in the deep end. It was weird because I had come from, from Rogue uh, and now I'm talking to the TV guys and, uh, you know, there's, uh, they're connected but not, you know, the, the people writing Rebels don't necessarily know everything that's happening on, mm -hmm. on Rogue One and vice versa. And I had to learn... I, you know, I had to learn, yeah, there's a, again, there's a learning curve because, you know, that there's, there's a mythology to it and there's mm -hmm. so much deep, you know, I like Star Wars, but I'm not necessarily the person that read every single, you know, expanded universe book and like watched, you know, every, you know, played every kind of like, you know, hardcore uh, tabletop role playing sure. game. Like the, like the Pablo and those guys, they know all of that stuff and they have that like in their bones. Mm -hmm. Um, and you had, did you have access to them during like, especially for rogue, right? Cause I would, I would imagine there's a huge amount of pressure on your shoulders when you're like, I'm doing an origin story. I can't, I have to get everything right. And not knowing some certain things might be a little bit. Yeah, constantly. I mean, I, that, I mean, it will get, if it's wrong, it will get caught at some point, but there are a lot of times where you just kind of like walk down the hall and say to someone, Hey, what are you, you know, what, what do you call these guys? Or mm -hmm. could this, could, if, if this happened would that contradict something else and they, and they just know the answer. Um, and a lot of the times, again, as, as super Star Wars fans, you like the basic stuff you know, but there might be something that is slightly more kind of, wow, that's like more of a real deep cut. And you just go ask someone. They have, they, they have those people there. Oh, that's like, awesome. It's their job to know this that's stuff. It's a great resource for yeah. you. Yeah. Very cool. Just sitting in the room waiting for someone to ask a Star Wars question. Well, no, but I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the thing too. Like you, you look at like kind of what Marvel does, right? And Marvel, uh, one of the things that a lot of people talk about is like um, Kevin Feige over there has created this group of people that, that are resources and they go to... Like every movie that comes in, they just have this sort of set resource for everyone that's making it. So mm -hmm. they can take these new directors or these new writers and kind of funnel them into this workflow that's already established. And I honestly think that's a really, really, that's a great reason why those films are succeeding. Right? And I have to imagine that's probably the same ecosystem that they're trying to create at Lucasfilm now, or at Disney rather, I guess, and Lucasfilm, uh, going into making more of these. Right? It behooves you to say, Gary did a great job, or this person does a great job at this thing let's keep them around so they can actually at least consult on this. I would imagine. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's, I mean, rogue's a good example. I mean, rogue has elements of the prequels in it. It has mm -hmm. elements of the clone wars. Not on the Watto, for um, sure. Yeah. Where was Watto? <laughs> is it, is it, who can we ask Pablo? Let's get Pablo on the phone. Where's Watto at? <laughs> I'm just saying all, there's all these, there's always all these group scenes, people at bars. So all I'm asking is in the back. Is that Watto's what, just that, chilling. That's, that's what you would want. I'm a Watto fan. I'm there. a Watto that's fan. That's what you would choose. That's right. No. Okay. Um, I'm just saying no to that. <laughs> okay. That's just, just no. <laughs> I'm not saying he needs to be a main character. You I just want to not do him in the back. Greg, Greg made his own um, kind of story, not origin story, but just like a continuation, continuation of, of Watto's life. That, so if you ever need, if you ever need any uh, wow. thoughts. Maybe I should figure out a way for you to like go and be, be able to go in and pitch that. There you oh, go. God. It'd be a great episode of some cartoon show because he, basically he becomes a horse. But not a horse. What uh, it's you know the things the stormtroopers ride around on. Mm -hmm. One of them do back. A do back. A yeah. do back. He becomes a do back. He becomes a do back. But he's still <laughs> sentient. And he talks. This is your right. This is your big idea. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, maybe don't put him in a room to pitch that to anyone. That, wow. I was anyone good to your mother. <laughs> wow. But now he's a horse. That is that's amazing. It's his comeuppance. <laughs> See, that's a lot. That's a lot better than what I would have pitched. I would have pitched sort of a deep, dark, alcoholic like route with him. Where no, it's like no, after no, he lost no, his, no. his prize slave, he's just like, I gotta, I gotta start hit the bottle. Sure, as hard as humanly possible. This is just how, this shows how bad things have gone though in the Empire. Oh, he went bad. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. like they, they they crack down and everything for sure. 